Alihim Sabi Jma'in. If you could stay this side, gentlemen, we're, that's for the ladies, yeah. Unless you're also struggling from the phenomenon of this time. Uh, alhamdulillah. Thank you for coming. Jazakallah khair. Um, I think these sessions are really important because um, there's l many questions that people have in their mind about the prayer, but they sometimes don't have the avenue to ask. And I hope I can be that avenue and I can answer your questions. No, I'm, I'm not sure how to run the session because we've done this before. So if you go to the Wicca Mosque YouTube channel, there's something that we ran five years ago and it was designed to sort of do the same thing. However, um, I think one of the benefits of this session, and it'll make a difference from the last one, is that you're able to ask fresh questions, inshallah, questions that are you know important to you. So. I'm going to maybe go through the prayer. I'm going to read through it, and um, you can check it. Okay, feel like you're happy with what you're reading, um, and then I will go through some of the fiqhi points to do with it, basics, inshallah ta'ala. And wherever you feel like you have a question, you may ask, inshallah. So I have some questions that um, some a friend has sent to me that I hope I can answer during the session, inshallah. Is that is that okay? The reason why we start with this is the obvious one, which you already know. And it's really in preparation for the grave, you know, because one of the first things that a, peop a person will be taken to account for is their, their delivery or their lack of, you know, delivery of this pillar of this religion. And it concerns us, do you get it? That really worries us. And um, the fact that it's a pillar you know, and um, it's important, it's beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we want to try to make sure we get it right. To get it to the best of our ability. And sometimes what happens is, over time, you know, people, um, thank you, yeah, people forget they get certain things um, wrong. I was on Hajj once, and there was a brother next to me, and he was reading, and he was reading wrong. He was reading his namaz wrong. His Fatiha, he couldn't say. I heard a video of somebody I know. He was making, he was reading the Fatiha near the Kaaba. He was reading it wrong. Like, do you get it? Like, why are you getting this Surah Fatiha wrong? You know, why didn't you get it checked by someone? Why didn't you, you know, learn it properly? What stopped you? And sometimes there's embarrassment involved. You see, like, who do I go to? What is he going to think of me? You with me? Um, and I hope, you know, that in this position that we, inshallah, Allah protects us from making any judgment. You see, people have different journeys and some have been fortunate enough to learn properly. Some, they just struggle with the Arabic. They didn't like their teacher in the mosque. You know, there's lots of reasons for why they didn't learn it properly. And so, um, inshallah, if you ever have that question or you wish you want me to check it, then just let me know and it's not hard to do, inshallah. So what I'll do is I'll start from the beginning, okay? And so I'll read it, and I'll read it maybe th two, three times. And you can sort of read with me, you can check it as you're reading along, inshallah. So, of course, when we start to pray, we pray. Um, we have certain prerequisites. We're not looking at them at the moment. Before I can pray, there's certain things I need in place. We'll come back to that shortly. Um, I'm going to look at a Turaqat namaz, okay? How do I read a Turaqat namaz? So when I'm starting, okay, I say Allahu Akbar. Okay. Um, what could go wrong here? You could have somebody say Allahu Akbar, which is fine. That's not wrong. Allahu, ak Allahu Akbar is fine. What could be wrong, okay, and will change the meaning is Allah. Ah, that first alif long or elongated is a problem. Why? Because it's in the Arabic language, ah, and Hamza in the beginning is a question mark. So instead of saying, God is the greatest, Allahu Akbar, when you say Allah, that means, is God the greatest? It becomes a question. So that's a problem. Is that clear? So if somebody's doing that, they should change that. Okay. So Allahu Akbar. Okay. Um, you hear some people say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. They say this, um, which they should, if they can, correct it. Okay, because it's not Akbar or Akbar. Is that clear? It's Allahu Akbar. Okay, so that Akbar from Kabir. Kabir means Bara. 
akbar sabse bada the 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 greatest and akbar uh, kabir greatest or the big one akbar the greatest exactly so that's what you're saying this is really so there's a physical element of it but there's also a spiritual element which sometimes i remember sometimes i don't you see when i'm coming into the prayer i remember i'm about to stand in front of the greatest do you see a uh, you know and and sometimes i don't sometimes unfortunately you know um allahu akbar is a kebab in front of me do you get it because my mind's on a kebab i'm planning where i'm going tonight allah you get it that's a shame isn't it that's my loss whose loss is that it's my loss so if i if i really want to make it count and it means a lot to me and that's what i'm suffering from like i'm suffering from a lot of images a lot of like a whole film goes through my mind in the namaz then i i have to find a way to challenge that you see and then you have to ask yourself well what's the best way i can prepare for a prayer and it might the answer might be don't go from your phone or from a conversation into the prayer and maybe and sometimes we have most of these prayers have sunnahs before them and the sunnahs are there to prepare you for the fard get it like you've had a trial run where you've tried to focus and you've just done a a, a warm up lap okay right it's like that. so now you go in you know you're focused but when you come directly into a prayer without having done anything then some t- maybe that's your answer maybe like oh that that's why you know i can't focus i do all those like so maybe i need a few minutes before prayer i just need to turn off like i just need to close my eyes yeah, that might be the answer it's okay get it because it is really important that when i stand in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that i really am do my best is that clear so that's why wudu fresh wudu is good why because again it refreshes you get it perspective you know you know you, you're preparing yourself so there's a number of things that you could do one is fresh wudu for every prayer to um that you actually pray your sunnahs before you pray your fars number 3 that if there's no sunnahs that that you actually maybe just close your eyes and just do some dhikr you know just do something that allows you to when you enter the prayer that you actually are more focused okay um so allahu akbar um then you um we have raising our hands okay um facing which way you know all of it i mean you, you're supposed to have your fingers touching your earlobes for the men and for the ladies parallel with their um what is it shoulders and so because the, the, if they go higher they have to cover their um forearms okay so the higher they go the more likely it's going to fall down is that clear and so you know this is this allows it doesn't really fall you know but that does you see and so here they go like this and we raise it to our ears okay and so y- y- this is a sunnah action and we know in namaz you have farz actions which are obligatory and then you have sunnah actions and and sometimes because people don't know the difference between two they assume that the whole namaz is messed up because they let go of their hands or they didn't raise their hands properly and so forth so this is uh, a problem and a lot of this comes at, uh, you know uh, as a result of not learning when you know your rules you know the roads right you know the rules of driving right <laughs> it's easy you <laughs> get it it's like relax relax i ain't broken the law right this is uh, you know it's just easy because you know the roads okay so if you know the rules okay the fiqh of it okay it's very easy you don't fall into the trap of shaitan where he can have you spinning for months thinking man i messed up man i messed up man i prayed it wrong i think i prayed it i'm not sure did i oh you like you just like because you don't know and you don't ask so it just stays there and so you're just hoping you got it right okay and then when you you know when when the answer finally comes out like, thank god do i get it and then if it's wrong you know oh my god man i messed up namaz for so long and then all it was just learning so if you learn this is why people should make time to learn of course that's what we do in the sil courses we try to provide uh, a, a place for people to come and learn their worship so they're confident in their worship so allahu akbar it's good to sort of extend the takbir 
uh, for the entire time. So from there up until you're holding it. Allahu Akbar. Okay. So then you're filling your prayer with dhikr. You could go Allahu Akbar. What you shouldn't do is drop the hands. You go Allahu Akbar. You don't let people drop the hands to the side and then they bring them up. Okay. That there's no need for. Do you, you get my point? You go Allahu Akbar. And then you hold it. Okay. That there's no need for. Okay. You hold your hands and, and you put, hold them. We have a number of different places that you, you may hold your hands depending on which school you follow. Okay. So there are the Shafis who hold it higher. Okay. Um, some drop it to their sides. And this, all of this comes from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in different ways. And so that's not an issue. Okay. And nor should we make these big issues you with me. Believe it or not, some people pray namaz and go, Allahu Akbar. The entire namaz, they're just like, oh, the guy next to me is Vabi. That's their prayer. Like, look, look how wide he's got his feet. Look how hard. Why are you hold every rakah, the same conversation the same conversation, which is like, Astaghfirullah. Look how high he's like, all right, lad, give me some space now, you know. And the entire prayer is taken up by by their conversation with themselves about the gentleman next to him. The guy next to him is in Wonderland. You get it? He is somewhere sincerely with Allah. Even though you might not agree with how he's holding his hands and how he's holding his, you know, how wide he's, his stance is, but his, it seems like he may have his heart in there. He ain't got time for you, by the way. You get it? But yeah, you know, shaitan's taking you for a trip, bro. The entire prayer, Allahu Akbar to the end. You get it? Or sometimes like, man, this guy smells bad. You get it? You get it? And then the shaitan on that trip, like, you know, I wonder what he does. It's going to smell curry, man. Yeah, like, uh, you know, cigarettes. What brand is that? Hmm. No, there's a bit more than cigarettes now. And your prayers on that flex to get, like, and this is why it's really important to focus on your prayer. If you know your prayer, you know you know what you're supposed to do, you, you're more likely to protect yourself from these type of things. Okay, so, Allahu Akbar. Then you read the Thana, okay? Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika وَتَبَارَكَ اسْمُكَ وَتَعَالَى جَدُّكَ وَلَا إِلَهَ غَيْرُكَ Okay, you can read it together with me if you want. سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ وَبِحَمْدِكَ وَتَبَارَكَ اسْمُكَ وَتَعَالَى جَدُّكَ وَلَا إِلَهَ غَيْرُكَ And so here, no, we'll repeat it a third time, okay? There's no namaz police here, so don't worry, okay? You just need to check yours, okay? You're not here to listen to your neighbors, okay? So here... Am I reading this correctly? Okay. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika wa tabaraka smuka wa ta'ala jadduka. A lot of the people in the early days, wa ta'ala. What is it? Wa ta'ala jadduka. There's no wa ta'ala because no shadda on the top. What is it? Wa ta'ala. Mom and dad might read it like that. Wa ta'ala jadduka. Okay. Not, not like that. So, Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika. Allah bless these people who when they came from Pakistan in the early days they had to then organize like oh you know namaz you know they came for work then they're like you know must you know we need a mosque who can lead us in prayer so whoever sort of knew a little bit suddenly they were made the imam excuse me they're like normal guys who landed from Pakistan they they just they were just praying, right? And they knew a little bit but that they had learned from the villages back home. They were promoted, quick promotion, right? Okay, yallah, you're imams up. So they were like working and then they were imams and they're leading people in prayer. Then they're like, you know, we need we got kids now. Uh, who's gonna teach them Quran? Yallah, you're uh, Quran Shifra. So people suddenly then they started to teach as well. So it's not their fault really. They were promoted without training and then they taught what they knew. So then this is where you get this whole spread, right? What tabara, what ta'ala. It sort of came from those, um, you know, factory workers. Allah blessed them for trying, right? So what is it again? Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika wa tabaraka smuka wa ta'ala jadduka wa la ilaha ghayruk. So that's the thana. Again, if I grasp the meaning of this, right, you know, uh, this is my uh, the opening of my prayer. Uh, glory be to Allah. Uh, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika. Okay. A uh, glory be to you, O my Lord. Okay. 
and all praise be to you. A glory meaning you're perfect. You know, all of this imperfection, the attribute to God, he's free of that. You get it? He's subhan. And so we have a lot of that subhana there. We have been tasbihs in the ruku'an, in the sajdah, which is all the same thing, which is like God is free of the shirk, shirk that they attribute to him, free of partners that they attribute to him. Now they're trying to remove religion from schools and they're putting all these systems in place they want people to worship. And God's free of all of that. I mean, you can see somebody sent me something yesterday, like all of these systems, worship this, not religion. So that will be the new gods, okay, the new gods that they'll pr produce. They won't call it God, but they are the new, the new whatever, right? So that's so the thana is very powerful, okay? A blessed is your name, lofty is your status. There is no God but you, Ya Allah. How beautiful is that? Eh? And I say, I start my prayer, glory be to Allah and all praise be to Him. Subhanakallahumma, oh my Allah. Eh? And all praise be to you. Eh? And Mubarak is your name. وَتَعَالَ عَالِي جَدُّكَ is your status وَلَا إِلَهَ غَيْرُكَ and there's no Lord but, uh, but you then you read أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ I want you to focus on your Fatiha see are you getting it all what الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ your tajweed might be off, it's not the end of the world. But the words are all there or no? Yeah? Maliki yawmiddin Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'een Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem Sirat al-ladheena an'amta alayhim Ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim Waladdallin I mean, so again, uh, all the words there, am I missing a letter here and there? Okay, did you miss something as I read it or you're okay? Okay, again, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين. Read it faster. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين. Okay, cool. That's your فاتحة. Then you have said the آمين, which means um, what does آمين mean? Do you know? آمين uh, means استجب. Uh, oh God, answer my du'a because you've made a powerful du'a, and this is worth thinking about that. Every single namaz and every single prayer and every single unit starts with the Fatiha. Like how beloved is this to Allah? Then you add a surah of your choice, okay? Either you read a surah or you read a long verse or three short verses. Is that clear? You might only know one surah, okay? Which is, Kul Allahu Ahad. You might only know, Inna Atayna Kal Kawthar. So you'll repeat that again and again in every Every rakah, is that clear? Okay, and hopefully you'll learn more. Okay, so here, um, let's take Kul Huwa Allahu Ahad. Okay, so say, um, you read, you said Amin, then you read Bismillah Rahman Rahim quietly. And Kul Huwa Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Lam Yadid, Walam Yulad, Walam Yakullahu Kufu Wan Ahad. Is that clear? So here, now you've got the first rakat in terms of standing done. So, takbir, sana, subhanakallah, a'udhu billah, bismillah, alhamdulillah, the fatiha, ameen, bismillah, okay, and the surah. Right, that's your first rakah then. Then I'm going to go into ruku, so Allahu Akbar, I go into ruku, okay, and in ruku I'm holding my knees, right, 
I'm pushing them back, my back is straight, my legs are straight, okay? I don't bend my knees, the ladies bend their knees. Why? Because of their posterior, in order that, you know, so they don't stick it out, right? It's by bending the knees, they don't do that, okay? So they arch their backs, okay, and they bend their knees. The men push their knees back, you grasp your knees, and you push it back, and the ladies don't grasp their knees, they just place their hands on their knees, okay? And so here, um, and I look towards my toes. Nothing to do with toes. No focus on toes. No, I'm not looking at like when's the last time I cut my nails. You know, you know, pedic. You know, none of that stuff, right? It's just, just the th thing is that when I'm standing, I'm looking at the place of my sajda. When I move forward, that place of sajda moves with me, and it sort of moves towards your toes. So the point is, I'm I'm supposed to look down. That's the adab. You might say, I can't look down. Like when I look down, I can't focus. Right? I have to look forward. You know, look where you need to look, right? As long as you can focus. But you're more, li more likely to focus by looking down because when you look down, you're looking away from everything. But you might have a scenario where you have a glass floor and looking down is not a good sight. Why you're scared of heights. With me, or something else. So then you you know you look somewhere else. Are you with me? Okay. Um. So here, that's your first rakat done. Okay. Go into ruku. You read Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. What is it? Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. A in ruku, the bare minimum. Okay, that you must do in a ruku is what? What do you reckon? One. So, uh, uh, one tasbih you said. Would, uh, do you have to read the one tasbih or do you have to stay there for one tasbih or do you have to read three tasbihs? One. one. You said one, but you showed me three fingers. Good. So, um, read one, but you should read three. What do you reckon? Northerner, come on. Yeah, so the bare minimum that you remain in ruku, in order for your ruku to be valid, you must you, you must be in ruku for the time it takes to say one tasbih. Subhana rabbi al Are you with me? Okay. A being there, reading is not a fard. Okay. The fard of ruku is to be in ruku, that your limbs are still. Is that clear? In ruku, and then you come out. Is that clear? So being in ruku, for how long it takes to read. The reading is sunnah. Okay, so we say the bare minimum of sunnah is three. Do you have, sir? Bismillah. You have a question? No. Okay. So do you, do you get that? So if you're in a rush, for example, you've got to catch a flight. You gotta, you, 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 you know, you're looking after kids and or there's a problem, right? If it's serious, you can break your prayer. That's a different issue. But it, you might be in a rush. You might miss your prayer and you might miss your plane. And so you might pray quick. Is that clear? So in those type of scenarios, you might need to know this, that I just go in the ruku for a moment, and then I come out. Even if I read nothing, the ruku will be valid. Is that clear? So um, the ruku, subhana rabbi al azim, subhana rabbi al azim, subhana rabbi al azim. Okay, we try to do that in the prayer three times. I think more important than the numbers is you and you're understanding this dhikr. Do you get it? Like that when you're in ruku and you're bowing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? That you're able to click with this dhikr. Do you understand that you can remember that subhana rabbi al azim, glory be to Allah the magnificent, the azim, the mighty. And like that, that, that meaning, right? That I'm bowing and I'm remembering the might of God. Do you hear like none can make you bow but he? You know, like subhan and some people he does this too. I have a friend, we were in we were in Istanbul and subhanAllah he was praying on a chair and he said to me, he goes, uh, I said, I said, What happened to you? It hurt my back. Right? And the pain of, you know, like hurting your back, you know, sometimes it gets really serious. And he goes, But I miss, I envy those who can put their head on the floor. Like he couldn't bend his back. Like and then you know, like you, you this perspective again, like we take a lot of things for granted, you know. Like because I just m I can't I miss putting my head on the floor. 
So um, if I can grasp this meaning, very good, okay? So then I say, Sami Allah liman ham. But I, again, a few things here. I, I, I look towards my toes, okay? I hold my knees. You might have a scenario where you need to check what the kid's doing. You with me? It's not going to break your prayer to look, sort of turn your head and see what the kids are doing. You with me? Hey, because remember, your prayer don't break by turning your head. The prayer breaks when you turn your chest away from the Qibla. Okay, unless there's a need, right? Okay, hey, here, um, you know, if you turn your chest away, right, then the prayer breaks. So I could not, I could be in a situation where I just look over my shoulder, think they're, alhamdulillah, they're right, yeah? Okay, like your cup of tea, you forgot, you left on the windowsill. Now you're worried like, oh my God, I left on the windowsill, right? Is the is baby near it or not near it? You with me? You can be, so here, if it gets, if it gets dangerous, you break your wrap. Otherwise, you don't. Okay, and so if the missus is knocking on the door downstairs, it's not dangerous. I mean, it can get dangerous. Right? <laughs> like I'll speed up my prayer. Okay, but I'm not going to break my prayer. Okay, unless it's dangerous. She's screaming, "Kuta!" Like the dog after her. Okay, I can justify it. Okay, and so here maybe you know. So Subhanallah, the ruku. Okay, um, it's like then you say, "Sami Allahu liman hamida." Hey Allah, here's the one who praises him. Then you get up from the ruku, okay, saying that. Because you just praised him in the ruku now. Nah? Allah, here's the one who praises him. Rabbana lakal hamd. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Allahumma rabbana lakal hamd. All of these are fine, okay. So whichever one you say, Rab oh, for, oh Lord, Rabbana, our Lord, lakal hamd. For you is all praise. Hey, you just praised him. In the standing, you praised him when you went into ruku. You praised him in the ruku. Then you get back up. You say, "Rabbana lakal hamd." Okay, if we use all praise, and then you say, "Allahu akbar," and then you go into the sajda. Okay, um, of course, in the Hanafi school, knees first, then hands, then your nose and forehead sort of hit the ground. Is that clear? So your your you know, your feet are already touching the ground because you've gone into sajda. Your toes are now touching the ground. Okay. Your hands, um, not your forearms. For the men, the forearms should be off the ground. But the palms are on the ground, okay? And your nose and forehead. You find a lot of people, they do prostration with their nose off the ground. Do you get it? Like they, they won't know unless they now think about it, okay? And you'll find the nose is off the ground. And the nose needs to touch the ground. The one place where a big nose benefits you get it, okay? You always get the nose on the ground, okay? So somebody, yeah, I'm lucky, yeah? Like on the ground. He said the nose must touch the ground with the forehead. Um, um, here, prayer mats are fine, but it's a, if it's a really thick prayer mat, you know, you've got to make sure you push your head down so that you can feel the ground. Is that clear? Okay. So uh, when you're praying on surfaces that are super soft, you know, uh, you must push your head down so you can find, you know, the, its shape. Um, and then you read Tasbih again, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, okay? A glory be to Allah the Most High. Uh, again, three times, you may do more. If you're trying to progress your prayer, and you've been at three all your life, and you're trying to take it up a grade, then it's not a bad idea to increase your Tasbih from three to five. Are you with me? Where you're trying to increase your spirituality. So you go from three to five. You can slow my prayer down. By the way, it won't take too long, right? You know, any given prayer, you're just going to add, you know, what is it, a second or two more in each sajda. But it's worth it. Your ego probably saying, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm in a hurry. You're not in a hurry, but... And you're like, yeah, I'll show you, boy. Get it. Two more. You know what? You're really in a hurry. Let's do seven tasbihs today. And yeah. after a while, you'll find the ego gives up. I'll go nuts for a bit. Yeah, you know what? I did think about that. Yara, Subhana Rabbi Subhana. And you can feel sometimes you can feel you and you can feel your ego. Do you not feel it sometimes? Try it. Try doing namaz yeah, and try say, put that you're staying here today. Let's do twenty one. And you're like, come on, bro. Yeah, what's wrong with you and your new spiritual flex, right? Do care, you know. Like you'll feel you you hear a voice talking to you. Yeah, you'll hear a voice telling you. All right. After a bit, all right, whatever you say. You know, it's submission because, and this is good because if you're looking to draw nearer to Allah, there's no better place than the sajda. 
such as when you're closest to God. I had a, a this I gave shahada to somebody, right? It was like 2008, 2009. I was teaching in a, in a school in Banbury, and I had a last session on a Friday. I was off after Juma, so I was watching Dr. Omar Abdullah Farooq tell his story. I became Muslim. He's an academic from America. He became Muslim in 1977. So he's telling his story, right? Like a Protestant, you know, Christian. Okay, and how he became Muslim. He comes from an academic family. His parents were also academics. He's lecturing at the University of Chicago. Really intelligent man. And then this, the teacher says, "Oh, there's a there's a Polish lady who's interested in Islam." Are you okay to talk to her? I said, yeah, bismillah. So she comes in and she sits down. She starts asking me questions. I realize this girl's already on it. Like she's n She just needs to say the shahada. It's not as if she's got lots of questions. She's there. So I said, um, I'll tell you what. Why don't you, if you don't mind, you want to just watch this. I think this will benefit you. So she was okay. So I put it back slightly and I played it. Subhanallah. He was talking about how all of his questions were answered. But there was something missing, right? Okay. And, and, and he was looking for this, you know, the, the, the final part, right? Okay, because when somebody becomes Muslim, it's a long journey. It's not easy. Sometimes we make it very easy, you know. Freedom, peace, and Muslim, Pukura, Tiki, they become Muslim now. You get it? Uh, it's longer than that. It's a long process, right? And there's something, there's a point where it clicks. You're like... I'm going to buy a new film. I'm not sure what to buy. Which one shall I buy? The, the, the car, the same. Then there's a moment where you're like, I know what I'm getting. I know how I want to do this. You get it? So it's a long process. So I put this on for her and she starts watching. He said, it was all like this, right? All these questions were answered, but something wasn't quite right yet. Because until I prayed and I went into the sajda, because when I went into the sajda, at that point, it just all came into place, right? And he was telling this story. She's now watching this, and she's crying, and I'm giving her tissues, like, here you are. She's crying along, and she's nodding her head with him. And subhanAllah, she became Muslim she, that right afterwards. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So the sajda did it for her. That's how powerful that sajda is. It's a very powerful place. Whenever you're feeling distant from Allah, and you're looking for closeness, just go into a sajda. Just go into a sajda. You get it? And stay there for a while. Like just say, Subhana Rabbi al -Ala. Talk to Allah. You know how you're not in prayer, right? Talk to Allah. Say, Ya Allah, complain to Allah. Say, Ya Allah, help me. Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. You know, so it's a good place to be because it's really powerful, right? You as a human being, your identity, mashallah, you walk in the street, people are like, salams. You get it? They respect you, right? You have a presence, some people are very strong, some are physically strong, some are mentally strong. Masha, all of this is, you know, you carry it around with you, right? You put all of it down in sajda. Very powerful, no? Yeah, there's any time where you put it all on the ground and say, Ya Rab, I am great, but you've given it to me. Well, that's what they're saying, right? Subhana Rab, you're the greatest. Glory be to you, Ya Allah. Very powerful, okay? This is why... That's the sajda for you, okay? So you do that three times, then you get up, and you say nothing in between the two sajdas, according to the Hanafis. According to the Hanbalis, it becomes very impa uh, imperative to say something there, but maybe another time here, okay? So then you go back into the second sajda, and you read Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la three times, and if, uh, if you want more, you can do more. So now let's bring it together, okay? So that's the first rakah down for you. Allahu Akbar. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك وتبارك اسمك وتعالى جدك ولا إله غيرك أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر 
Subhana Rabbiyal Azim Subhana Rabbiyal Azim Subhana Rabbiyal Azim Samia uh, yeah No no I'll, I'll ch- I'm going to go into the second rakah I'll, I'll make that point yeah so, um, I'm still re- I'm repeating the first one okay Samia Allahu liman hamida rabbana lakal hamd Allahu akbar Subhana Rabbi al-A'la Subhana Rabbi al-A'la Subhana Rabbi al-A'la My hands are either close to my face so my, f- my nose and my forehead fits right in between or I can have a wide stance They're both fine, is that clear? For, for the ladies, they keep their forearms on the ground and for the men, they keep their chest away from their thighs Is that clear? You spread it out a little bit For the ladies, very compact as much as they can be. The one thing to be careful of in the sajjah is don't lift both feet off the ground. To lift both feet off the ground for how long it takes to read a tasbih will break your prayer. Is that clear? But if it comes off momentarily, it comes back again, it's not an issue. Is that clear? Hey, that's why keep something on the ground. Even a toe or the face of a na- the nail on a toe, something touching the ground, okay, it's really important for both feet. Exactly. Uh, you know, kids do this, isn't it? They go and say that both feet come up. Okay. Um, and so here it's important to keep them on the ground. Second rak'ah, when I get up, Allahu Akbar, there I don't start from fana. Because I've done that in the beginning and that's uh, restricted to the first rak'ah. In the second rak'ah, I read Bismillah Rahman Rahim. And then I read Surah Fatiha again. Ameen. And then I add a surah. You might say, I only know, Kulhu Allah Ahad. You read it again. Okay, is that clear? So you repeat a surah. And then if you're not reading a surah from the beginning, for example, you're reading Ayatul Kursi, then you don't need to read Bismillah. So, وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ آمين. اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ الْحَيُّ الْقَيُّومِ Okay. So if you read from the middle of a surah, for example, you're reading Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'innah At the end of Surah Al-Fajr, for example. So if you're doing that in Surah Yasin, you're reading from the middle somewhere, then you don't need Bismillah. Bismillah is for the beginning of a Surah. Okay, so you read that and then you go into the Rukus and the Sajdas and then you read, um, say, and then you sit down for the first sitting. You read, At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibat Assalamu alayka ayyuha nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh Of course you have uh, at the negation where you say Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah There's no God but Allah You lift your finger There's a number of ways you do this Either you go Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Or you wrap it like this, yeah? Where you bring your, these fingers, okay? And you bring them together, the three, the baby finger, the ring finger, the middle finger, and the, th- and the thumb. And so you, so you go ashhad, you go like that, right? Okay, and then you bring the finger up, and you bring it down, and you hold, you bring, you open the hand again, or you just hold it there. They're all fine, okay? You might find other brothers and sisters doing something different, okay, where they're moving their finger. Each one has their school, inshallah, you know, um, according to those schools, you know, those rulings may exist, okay? So, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. That's your tahiyyat. That's important. Why? Because at tahiyyat is wajib, is necessary. What comes after it is sunnah. So, Durood Sharif, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid Or you might have it without innaka hamidun majid in the first one. Is that, do you have it like that? It's possible, there's a few little variants, not an issue. But that Durood Sharif is Sunnah. So if I'm in a rush, I have a meeting to get back to. I'm trying to hide from John and Jonathan and jo- you know, Jody and Sarah that I'm actually a Muslim who prays, right? And you're really scared, you can get the sack. Hurry up, give salams after at and gone back. 
You're not allowed to have an official break for prayer. You get it? You're going on a cigarette break. I'm on a cigarette break. Oh, you can go. I'm going for a prayer break. What? That's not part of your contract. You get it? Now, suddenly, I'm going for a cigarette break. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's all right. Okay. We all go for a cigarette break. You get it? So you go behind, I don't know, fire exit, pray quickly, whatever it is. So here, you know, you might just read at tahiyyat and give salams quickly. You have jobs. You sometimes you ain't got time. You got to get back in. Get it, read at-tahiyyat, give salams. You know, that's, that's, don't do that at home. You know, at home, suddenly, oh, now I've got to give, oh God, mom's calling me down and says, eat roti. Yeah, but normally, mom's calling you down and says, eat roti, you're still doing the same thing. Like, let me finish my game. Yeah, I can't go down without finishing my game. Now in namaz, oh God, finish my namaz earlier. Mom's calling me. <laughs> no work. <laughs> like, so here, um, no, finish at tahiyyat drushi, and then Rabbi Jalni Mukima Salati wa Min Dhurriyati Rabbana wa Taqabbal Dua Rabbana Firli wa Liwali Daya wa Lil Mu'mini Nayo Mayakumul Hisab Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah So we repeat the last part again At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibat Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabiy wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammad Kama sallayta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim Do you say innaka hamidu majid? Do you know that? That's fine. إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. That's a two rakah salah. Okay. Um, now, of course, you have a three rakah salah. And you have a four rakah salah. Fajr is two sunnahs, two fard. There, this is exactly how you pray. Dhuhr is four sunnahs, right? Four fard, two sunnah, two nafal. Of course, four sunnahs. We, we try our best not to miss sunnahs. Really, that's what makes us sunnis. Because you follow the sunnah. Okay. So if you're missing the sunnahs, unless there's a need. Get it? You're on the uh, motorway, whatever, you, you'll know. Okay. So here, you know, otherwise you'll try your best. Four sunnahs, four far. Two sunnah, two nafal. Uh, we, um, what is it? Ma'asr, four sunnah, four far. However, the sunnahs of Asr and the Dhuhr are slightly different. The sunnah ones are mu'akkada. Sunnah mu'akkada, I emphasize sunnahs. Sunnahs of asr are ghair mu'akkada. They're non-emphasized. So there's a difference between the two. Only in its app, in its tahshahud, at tahiyyat. Okay, is that clear? Where, you know, the, uh, 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 by the way, if you read both of them the same, not an issue. Is that clear? Just so that you don't feel like, well, oh, I've been getting this wrong. No. Um, that, that's not, you know, the sunnahs are there, there's a slight difference, okay, is that clear? You're probably aware of it. When I say slight difference, like, I know what you're talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Let me tell you this part, though. In these sunnahs, right, okay, actually, let me just come back to it. So, we've done fajr, dhuhr, asr. Maghrib is three fard, two sunnah, two nafal. Isha, four sunnah, four fard. Two sunnah, two nafal, three with two nafal. Now, look. Let's start with the fard prayers. Then we go to that point I was about to make about sunnahs. Fard prayers, if it's more than two rak'ah, how do you pray them? Very easy. After at-tahiyyat, okay, in dhuhr prayer, for example, I've done the two rak'ahs. After at-tahiyyat, and say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu an Muhammad al abdul rasul. At that point, I get up for the third rak'ah. Okay, right? At the third rak'ah. When I get up for the third rak'ah, I read it like, like what? Like the second rakah in terms of Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And a surah Fatiha, 
No surah, no surah at, uh, attached to it. Just Fatiha. Yeah? So, so I get it for the third rakah. Okay, it's Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Up to Walad Dalin. Amin. Allahu Akbar. I go into Ruku. That's in Fard prayers. If you accidentally added a surah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kul hu Allahu Ahad. Oi, oi. Then you remember, it's not, it's okay. It's okay. Carry on. Or stop at that point better and go into ruku. It hasn't broken your prayer. You with me? Okay. So you add a fatiha. Ruku such is the same. Then you get up for the fourth rakat. What prayer are we praying? Dhuhr. Asr fard will be the same. Isha will be the same too. Then you get up for the fourth rakat and you read Bismillah and a fatiha. And then you go into your rukus and your sajdas and at tahiyat and your uh, durud sharif and Rabbi Jani and you end your prayer. Is that okay so far? So in any fard prayer, which is more than two rak'ahs, so it's either three rak'ahs or it's four rak'ahs. We don't have a five and a six. Yeah? Three rak'ahs like Maghrib or four rak'ahs like Asr, Dhuhr, Asr and Isha, you're going to add, <coughs> you're not going to add a surah in the third and fourth rak'ah. You're just going to read surah Fatiha. Is that clear? So in fard prayers, First rakah, surah Fatiha and an additional surah. Second rakah, Fatiha and an additional surah. Third rakah, only Fatiha. And fourth rakah, only Fatiha. No additional surahs. Is that okay? Now the difference, okay, will be the following. A fard will be different to what other prayers do we have? We have witr prayer, three witr of, uh, of Isha. And we have sunnah prayers. Witr are stronger than sunnah prayers. They're in between fard and the sunnahs. How are they prayed differently? The sunnahs, we're not talking about two sunnahs, they're exactly the same as the two fard. But the sunnahs, okay, and the witr are different to fard prayers. A three witr are different to three fard of Maghrib. And the four sunnahs are different to the four sunnahs of Dhuhr and the four sunnahs of Asr and, 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 that's, and the four sunnahs of Juma, before Juma and after Juma, they're different to four fard in the following. Witr and sunnah prayer, you must read a fatiha and a surah necessarily in the third rakat and the fourth rakat. So witr, you read fatiha and a surah in the first. Fatiha and a surah in the second. Fatiha and a surah in the third. Of course, then you say Allahu Akbar. And then you read the dua, don't you? Okay. But you have to add a surah then. We'll get to if you don't add, what happens? You get it? Then we'll get to that. What do you get in return for that? Okay. Here, a, that's your witr prayer. It's necessary. Fatiha and a surah. Okay. In all three. In sunnah is the same thing. Four sunnahs of Dhuhr, four sunnahs of Asr, four sunnahs of Isha, four sunnahs before Juma, and four sunnahs after Juma. You must read a Fatiha and a Surah in all of them. Got it? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. All sunnah, four sunnahs, yeah? Four sunnahs before Fard of Dhuhr. Four sunnahs, right? Sunnah. Which prayer are you talking about? Sunnah. A four, yeah, same setup. Allahu Akbar, Subhanak Allahumma bihamdiya, Fatiha, Surah, Ruku, Sajdas, Second Rakat, Bismillah, Fatiha, Surah, Ruku, Sajdas, at tahiyyatu Third Rakat, Bismillah, Fatiha, Surah, Ruku, Sajdas, Fourth Rakat, Bismillah, Fatiha, Surah, Ruku, Sajdas, and at tahiyyatu to the end. No, 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 oh, all Sunnahs. Okay, is that clear? For four and for Juma. Is that clear? Yeah, that's why we run this. Brilliant. You get now? Do you get that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which uh, brother has said that the first one and the fourth are. So the brothers, after reminding Zakir the brother, kind brother has said, I <laughs> have <laughs> question. I mean, look, the, the question is which four sunnahs replace the fard? They don't. 
the four sunnahs don't replace the fard of Juma or fard of Dhuhr on Juma prayer. The Juma two fard equal the four fard of Dhuhr. Why? Sunnah can never replace fard. The two weak. No. Juma compensates. Juma so strong as a two, you get it equals to the four on a Friday. You get it? Like it, it's it, Juma is Juma. It's just a two fard. Okay. Not, none of the sunnahs compensate. They don't. They the four sunnahs before and four sunnahs after have their own positions. You with me? Okay. They don't compensate. A, a, the f- the Juma prayer two fard are so strong, mashallah, on a Friday. That they equal to the four of any given dhuhr. Good. Um, any other questions before I we keep on going? Yep. Mm. Yeah. All the sunnahs, the four before, the four sunnahs before Juma and the four after are all emphasized. So you're going to read Fatiha and a surah in all rakas. But you also do that in Ghar Mu'akkadah. So the Sunnah Ghair Mu'akkadahs, which are in Asr and Isha, those four Sunnahs in the beginning, before the Fard prayers, they're slightly different to the normal Sunnahs. They're more like a Nafal prayer. Two Nafal prayers combined together. Is that clear? That's why you'll see when you, when you break them down, okay, they look like two Nafal prayers. How would you pray two Raka Nafal? Allahu Akbar. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika. Fatiha and Asura, Rukus and Sajdas. Second rakat, Bismillah, Fatiha, Nasura, Rukus and Sajdas, At-Tahiyyat, Durul Sharif, Rabbi Ja'alni, and Salams. The only difference is that you, when you combine the two, Nafal and two Nafal, you don't give Salams in the middle. Uh, in the first At-Tahiyyat, you'll read to the end, to the ra- end of Rabbi Ja'alni. Then you'll get up for the third rakat, you read Subhanak Allah wa bihamdika. And by the way, you must say, oh, no, I didn't know that. I've never done that. It's okay. Even if you didn't do that, your prayer is absolutely fine. Meaning that if you prayed Asr, four sunnah ghair muqadda, and the four sunnahs of Isha, ghair muqadda, and you got up after at it's fine. Your prayer is fine. You, wouldn't, you missed something, you know, additional, which is not wajib or, you know, and, and like it won't, it won't break your prayer. Do you get that? Good. Who has a question? Yeah, yeah, bismillah. We have our offer on by the way today. Ask one question, you get two free. And even the first one you don't pay for. Yeah, go for it. I'm, I'm pulling out questions for, uh, some brother sent me six questions. Yeah, <laughs> go for it. Excellent. That's actually one of the questions that I have here, right? Okay, so the question is, um, when I'm praying Salah, my prayer, and the surahs that I choose to recite in my prayer, of course we have and we have the order of the surahs as we have in the Quran. We have 114 surahs, starting with Surah Fatiha, ending with Surah Nas. Okay, so now um, must I read them in order, or is that optional? So if I'm reading in the first rakat, Kul a'udhu bi Rabbil Falak after the Fatiha, read Falak. In the second rakat, I I don't know a Nas. Do you get it? Like, I already know, Kul Hu Allahu Ahad. So I'm going from Surah number 113 to 112. Is that a problem? In, in a scenario where I don't know a Nas, okay, then no problem. You with me? Okay. But in a scenario where I know a Nas, it's better if I read Surah Nas. And if I didn't, okay, and I forgetfully went somewhere else, it's not an issue. You with me? But it's sort of maintaining the order taught to us by the Prophet or some that's better. So I think about which surah I'm going to read. Okay. Did you yeah, questions clear? So yes it's better to maintain the order. Okay. And then now if you're going to read so let's go take the example of the last four surahs. Surah number one eleven is Surah Qulullah al Ikhlas. Surah one twelve is Tabat Yada uh, one thirteen is Surah Al Falak and one fourteen is Surah Al Nas. If you're going to skip a surah, so for example, I read Kul, I read Kul Wallahad in the first rakat. In the second rakat, I don't want to read Tabat Yada. Okay, 
I want to read Kulhu Allah Ahad. Uh-uh. You can't leave a surah, one surah, and go to the third. That's deemed bad adab. You have dis- it's sort of disrespectful to the surah. Right? Okay, in a cold shoulder in the surah. So I don't even know it. That's a different issue. Okay, then you're fine to go to Kulhu Ahad. But if you know it, either you read that next one, Tabatida, or you miss two together. Okay, and you go to Surah to Anas. That's not clear. So th- this is, this adab is important. This is adab. It's not binding, but it's just this sort of respect for surahs. It's powerful, isn't it? It's beautiful, the adab. Yeah. Good. Any other questions? No questions? You've got to fire questions then. I learned from your questions. Um, for men, exposing ankle is important. I've heard you can't fold trousers from the bottom, but, sm- but must do from top. So I think what he's saying is, you know, put, you know, if your trousers are long, either you pull them up so they're always above your ankles, which is the sunnah, right? Okay, the sunnah is to have them mid shin. That's why our um, our noble people in different places in the world wear totis, they wear izars, right? They're always mid shin. Okay, um, that's prophetic. So if I see a brother. Uh, you know, wearing clothes like that, I should never mock them, you know, three quarters or something, you know. Actually, I should say, mashallah, you know, Allah bless, because most likely he's wearing it as a sunnah, right? Um, so, however, if my trousers have to be beyond my ankles, okay, um, do I fold them? Yeah, it's better to fold from the top. I pull them up, basically. And must I fold them from the bottom? Um, to bring it up because of the warning of the Prophet Sallallahu about you know whatever's be beyond it right and and ending up in the hellfire. Um, our teachers teach taught us in Syria that no, you don't fold them up, you just leave them. And the problem, you know, in, in the Hadith, for example, the problem was the fact that people wore long, um, hanging clothes and and that was connected to their sort of conceit and their you know seeing themselves better than other people out of takabur. And like a wealthy person wore long clothes. Like you find this with the monarchy, for example, you know. So a lot of that. So that's a problem. If that's the intention, then that's an issue. But I don't think that happens anymore. Do you get like that 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 illa, like that reason's gone. And who wears trousers and they're thinking about, oh, I'm better than you because look how long my trousers are. D- it doesn't exist. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq is mentioned to have complained to the Prophet or shown concern. And he said, no, no, Abu Bakr, you don't fall into this. Because you don't wear it out of takabur, okay? And to or kama qara is or something. So, um, so if your trousers are long, it's not an issue as, uh, as far as I understand, and you shouldn't fold them up. But you may pull them up, and that's better. Um, witr, three witr isha. If you don't know the dua, what else can you read in the third rakah when you raise hands to the ears in the final rakah? The witr are prayed slightly different, aren't they? You read, f- you get up, you read a tahiyat, you get up for the third rakah, you read fatiha and the surah. It's Allah Akbar and you raise your hands and you hold the mini to your belly button and then you read the dua. What is the dua? Allahumma inna nasta'inuka. And that, that, that dua of qurut, okay? If you don't know it, what do you do? You may read. You have a number of different options. First of all, what other duas do you know? Say, I don't know any other duas. You actually know duas, but you just don't know you know duas, right? Like, you know Rabbi Ja'alni, you know. The bare minimum is to say Allahumma ghfirli three times. Oh Allah, forgive me. Allahumma ghfirli, Allahumma ghfirli, Allahumma ghfirli. Or you may read the sunnah dua of Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina athab al nar. Is that clear? And so here, that's the alternative. Okay, a dua like that. Okay, um, and then um, and then you should try learning the dua kunut. Is that clear? Until you get it right. So, do you get that? So you raise your hands, you hold them. And then you read the dua. If I don't know the dua, I go to the alternative. Okay, of Rabbi Jalni or Rabbana Atina Fidunya, Allah Makhfirli. If what about if you forgot to read the dua? You went, you read Quran, Kunullah, and you went, Allahu Akbar, you went to Ruku. What did you do then? Yeah. So basically, you missed the Allahu Akbar and the dua, and you went into the Ruku. What do you do in that scenario? Yeah, what have you missed? It's wajib necessary. So you have fard elements, you have wajib elements, you have sunnah elements, okay, you have mustahabat, uh, recommended elements of the prayer. 
Whenever you miss a fard prayer, a fard element of your prayer, your prayer breaks. Unless you make it up in the prayer. For example, I was supposed to do two sajda, I did one sajda. Yes or no? Like sometimes you have days. One brother, you're so dazed you don't know what's happening. One brother goes, go walk past the car, the car they burnt the other day. You know, bonfire came early, right? Thank God nobody got hurt, subhanAllah. He goes, I walked past the car. I was in a daze, right? I just walked right past it. Came to the prayer because I wanted to catch the prayer. I wasn't thinking about anything else. Came to the prayer, prayed, then went back and thought, hey, what happened here? He goes, I actually walked past it and didn't even see it. Sometimes you're in a day, your mind's so busy, the, the simplest, the most obvious things you don't do. You with me? Okay. You know, people can leave their doors open. Right? They turn their cars off. I know. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> I mentioned this. Um, uh, can I mention names? Yeah. No, I won't mention names. So what are these scholars? Famous scholar, really famous, right? So I was sitting at a dinner table, with, at dinner at tea with some elderly people yesterday and they're, they they were talking about some of the ulama and they go one alim right he goes the last person you want to sit in a car with is with him <laughs> you know, he, he's he's in his own world he goes off and he's talking and it's like do a sharp turn off supposed to go this way and <laughs> he's not a good driver type of thing and he goes his wife said to them that oh he when it comes to driving that's not his thing like he'll park a car, he goes, he's parked a car, and then gone, and then realize an hour, oh, I left the car on. And he goes, we've had a scenario where he forgot to turn the car off until the petrol went, <laughs> right? Hey, hey, Sometimes people's minds are preoccupied by ideas. You get it? Hey, hey, ideas or problem solving or problems in life that they don't see the obvious things. You with me? Okay? Um, and so, subhanAllah, this happens. What's that got to do with what we're talking about? So you can have witr prayer, yeah? One sajda, nah. Oh yeah, 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 that's the point. Well done. I did I did one sajda in fard prayer. Hey, my prayers don't be valid if I do one sajda, so what do I do? I get it for the second rakah. Then I realize I only did one sajda. Come on, what do we do? I, it's fard to do two sajdas in each rakah. You need to make that sajda up. So either you make it up in the next rakah, you do three. Ideally, in at-tahiyyat, when you finish at-tahiyyat, you do one sajda. Then you come back, read at-tahiyyat again. Then you give salams and you sajda sahab because you move the fard from its place. And then you read at-tahiyyat again a third time to the end of the prayer and you finish the prayer. So that's a fard. Anyway, as long as I've done it, if I ended the prayer like, oh, I did one sajda, then you have to repeat your prayer. It's like that. Um, but in witr, it's wajib. So if you miss the takbir and the dua, and you went to ruku sajjah, then you have to do a forgetful prostration. Forgetful prostrations are done at the end of the at-tahiyyat, last sitting. You have two sittings in namaz. If it's a two rakah prayer, you only have one at-tahiyyat. But if you have a three or four rakah prayer, you have two sittings at-tahiyyat twice. If you miss a wajib, the first at-tahiyyat is a wajib. If you missed it, for example, you're praying a uh, four rakah salah, you're supposed to read at-tahiyyat and you got up for the third rakah. You forgot. So you don't go back, you carry on. You missed, what have you missed? At-tahiyyat. A lot of people don't know what the value of the at-tahiyyat is. Like, is it a fard? Is it wajib? They just think namaz, oh, but you just, it's going to break. Go back. Read at-tahiyyat, you know? Uh-uh. It's trying to recognize what is it? What's the value of it? So then you'll read, you'll, you'll go to, when you get to the end of the prayer, and you read At-Tahiyyat, you get to the end of At-Tahiyyat, you go, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, then you do two sajdas. Yeah? They're called forgetfulness sajdas, yeah? Two forgetful sajdas, okay? You, when you've done two sajdas, they're an expiation for those type of mistakes. People use the two sajdas for any mistake they make in namaz. Because they don't know what, what, for example, I didn't read Amin. Two sajdas at the end. Okay. okay. Oh, I, I didn't read a surah. Oh, I didn't read Subhan Rabbi Al-Ala three times. Two sajdas at the end. That's not the way. You get it? Everything has a value. It's trying to learn your prayer, break it down, and see what, what's what. Um, the other question is, 
Um, when reading surahs in each rakat, do they need to be read in order as per the Quran? And we said yes. Yeah, and we explained that. Yeah. Um, can we read four quls on a trot? Uh, in one rakah or in four rakahs? So, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ Then you have إِذَا جَاءَ You have تَبَّتَدَ Right? And then you have Surah Ikhlas, Surah Al-Falaq, Surah Al-Najishkan Yeah, because you've got two surahs as a gap between قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ and قُلْهُ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would read in his witr prayer, we isha witr, and he would read in, in Maghrib, Sunnah, generally in Sunnahs and Turaqah before Tawaf and so forth. Hazrat Baq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would read, Qul ya ayu al kafirun, and then Surah Ikhlas. The two surahs gap, okay? So, Sabbih isma rabbi kala ala in the first rakah in witr, and then the second and third, Qul ya ayu al kafirun, Surah Ikhlas. Okay. Um, adhan. Do most people read Adhan wrong because they elongate the words for beautiful rhythm ahead of correctness? Um, depends what you elongate. Like I told you in the beginning of the session, if you say, Allah, that's a problem. But if someone says, Allahu Akbar, Allah, that's not a problem. Yeah, like, you allow, it's not Quran. Are you with me? The adhan is supposed to be beautified, and sometimes they are longer. Okay, it's not an issue. So it depends what. Ashhadu, ashhadu, Allah ilaha ill Allah. So I'm trying to work out where we, it would be wrong to elong. Ashhadu, that's wrong. Ashhadu Allah, ashhadu wrong. Why? Because Ashhadu. If you say Ashhadu, you're putting a wow. There's no wow there. You get it? So it's sort of knowing where you can. Ashhadu Allah. That's fine. Illa Allah. That's okay. Yeah. So it's trying to find out where. It's, it's a. Hayya ala salat. That's fine. Hayya. Mm, do you get it? Sort of, it's sort of knowing. This seems like an art to it. Um, so, it, generally speaking, elongation is not an issue. Um, just sometimes it can be like oh, Allah is a problem. The good one. Well, Ashhadu Anna wrong. Ashhadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Ashhadu Anna. Ashhadu an that's fine because gunna, but ashhadu an na well done so so yeah so this is down to the muazzin anybody who wants to call the adhan they should check you know they should ask they should sit down you know um, they may pay if they want for the service but you know that's a different issue right here but that yeah at least it's not on lunch you know that's better right because then the children learn it wrong then you're to blame you see why because you taught them wrong yes. I mean, look, prayer, teach uh, salah in prayer, as far as I know, you know, some people mention makru. As far as my teacher, Sheikh Samad mentions, no, as far as we know, no karaha. It's hot, man. <laughs> like, you know, as long as it's not, um, is that called, what's that, tank top? Yeah, that's problematic. But, you know, T-shirt is not an issue, you know. Uh, people have more serious issues than T-shirts. People kick off in the most of their T-shirt like years. You go, they walk off, t-shirt on like They're backbiting the poor chap. That's a serious guna. He's only got a t-shirt on. Or he's got a long kacha on. And then for you to go down and say, Fulana putra jaila, toko kalayas. That's guna. That's a guna kabira. That's a major sin. Like, what, what about that? You know, like, it's crazy. Leave people alone. Get it? Unless something's seriously wrong. If somebody isn't seriously wrong, tell them with piyar and adab. Take them to the corner. Say, ma putar, Allah took you khush raka. Beta, this is not appropriate. Guaranteed, he'll accept your nasihat, inshallah. But Sarah is saying, hey, 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 
<laughs> it was that. And the poor guy's come in. He's come in from the wise, for example, right there. Everything, you know, it's a bit more relaxed. Come here. It's a different culture. Yeah, they don't even let you pray. Problem, that is. Problem. وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةِ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا hey, This is hikmat. With hikmat, honestly, you can do so much. This is a problem we have. We have to recognize, we have to find ways. Adab nal, piyar nal. Honestly, you win over them. It's dangerous, by the way. I have a friend. I was there. He used to drink alcohol. Actually, his father drank alcohol. They didn't know he drank alcohol, right? His father used to drink alcohol. He came into the masjid in a mosque and the elders, elder, elderly people, they turned, pointed, his dad's a sharabi, what does he want here? Took him a decade to come back because of this. Sometimes a person could say a kalima, a word, it throws him in the depths of the hellfire without them even knowing. Took him away for 10 years. You know, like, I tried to be good and these people pushed him away. The man, he urinated in the masjid. <laughs> he was urinating. Can, imagine, can you imagine that? Like, in the corner, somebody's like, if a kid did that, you know, then you say, it's understood. but they wouldn't spare the kid. They get to the bottom of whose family it is and put it on Facebook and all the rest of it, right? You know, he, uh, he was a man, grown up man was urinating in the masjid, for God's sake. And they try to, they try, they were gonna do what people do, right? They're gonna give him a beating, bro. Can you imagine that? So they sort him out. They would, God knows what they do to him. And the prophet stopped them, said, Leave him, let him finish. Because it harms you, right? You know, you're gonna scare him, you're gonna shock him. Let him finish. Once he finished, he didn't say, You bagarat, you this. He never spoke to people like that. Why do you think he won over people's hearts? He said, you come here and you not go clean up after him. You clean up, let me teach him, let me educate him. So this is not, this is a mustard, this is not for, for that. Just out of love. You know, and that, that's, what we need, we know we need that. Yeah, you know, we all need that. We need that more, the young people, whatever the elders say. But if they're rude, you don't be the same as them. You with me? Like why, you know, why are you walking away and put off or relax? It's okay. You find an excuse for them as well. So we have to mutually work it out, basically, uh, uh, with respect. With respect, we win, inshallah. Adab. Good. Um, I'm going gonna, gonna to wrap it up. With the, if you forget to raise your hand in the third rakah, what do you do? We said um, you do sadr sahaw. Um, anybody have a question? I'm trying to see if there's any questions sent to me. Yes. Yeah. Bismillah. What's your name, by the way? Name. Nice. Uh, very, really good question. In in fard prayers, you shouldn't do add. You shouldn't add anything. Uh, can you make your own du'as? In fard prayers, never. You shouldn't add anything. You should stick to the prophetic way. So after Rabbi Jani, you know, and you know, unless this is like an imam taking longer, you may add sunnah du'as, right? But just end it. In sunnah prayers, you may, you get it, and you do that in the Arabic language. Okay, memorize them from the sunnah, and. Um, I always know, but it's better to check this. That I I should check, but I rem I remember that in nafal prayers you may even say it in whichever language you like. That's what I remember, but I might be wrong. Just as a disclaimer. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a really good question here. Like, like I, I pray Jamaat, and I give. I came late. I missed a rakah for that. I missed one unit. How do you miss a rakat in Jamaat? If the imam's gone, if the imam's in ruku, you try join him, but he gets up. If he gets up and you didn't synchronize with his ruku, you miss the rakah. Not the sajjas with the ruku. So you miss the rakah. He gives salams, and you give salams with the flow. Salam alaikum, salam alaikum. And then you write. Oh no, <laughs> I've got a rakah to make up. Uh, in your mind, obviously you're not saying that, that would break your prayer, right? If you were going to go into prayer. Yeah, at this point, if you remember, you're just doing the subhanallahs and you're looking around and you know, you ain't moved, then you can just get up. Like, you get up. Just get up and carry on reading that one rakah you missed. However, if next man gives you salam, what's happening? You're playing 40 today, are you not? You know, you're having a conversation. 
then you've got to repeat the entire prayer because the talking has broke your prayer. Exactly. The salams broke it, but you're sort of still connected because you didn't speak outside that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Any? Yeah. No, then you that gap of praying sunnahs would break the prayer because you've, you've done something completely different. So you'd have to repeat your prayers again. Yes, boss. That's, a, that's what you're supposed to do. So if Imam gives salams to the right, right? And then actually, you know, you're right. Imam gives salams to the right and the left. You're supposed to wait, aren't you? You don't give salams. But you did give salams. That's not a problem. I could still get up. I gave one salam, then like, oh no, I've got a rakah to make up. It's fine. I just get up after he gives second salam. That's not a problem. Yes. Anybody else? Now, you have to trigger me now because there's lots of things I wanted to say and speak about. But now it's better just we just go with this. Yeah. Hmm. Excellent. So here, um, you missed your dhuhr, asam. You've been at work all day. You know, you, you didn't pray. Okay. When you pray in the evening, okay, then you should pray in order. Last fajr I missed. Last dhuhr I missed. Last asr I missed. Then pray your maghrib. You with me? Of course, any qada prayers, you only pray the fard element. Soon as go with it. Okay. So yes. Yeah. Only fard. Yeah, next fard. You may make dua, you know, but there's just a fard element. Is that clear? So you move from that's better, that order's better. Yep. Yes. It's okay. No, no, don't say last. Maybe another one will come to your mind. It's not an issue. Yep. Mm. So we have a PDF on the website, wickhammoss.com. If you go to the education part, you have the downloads of prayer, how it's done. So you've got your right side and left side. Okay, when you're sitting in at tahiyat your right leg, okay, and your foot, you fold and you sit on it. As you sit on your knees, right? So if I sit on my knees, okay. If I sit like this, with my toes just facing backwards, okay, like this. Um, but what you'll find is, it's trying to get your entirety facing Qibla. So I've got my face and my chest facing Qibla, my knees are facing Qibla, my hands are facing Qibla. And the only thing that remains is my feet. So then I, when I sit on this foot and I fold it, okay, like this, and I could curl the, t you know, the toes, so I sit on it with my toes facing Qibla. So clear, like you probably do. And then the, the right one, um, you stand with your toes facing. So the left foot, you fold sideways and you sit on it. You sit on the inner part of the instep of it. And the right one, you you stand up like this with your toes facing Qibla. I pulled the calf muscle I was struck before, uh, before this. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the last thing I needed. <laughs> yeah, but do you, do you, is that clear? You get it? So... Um, of course, you'll see variations where people stick the, this, the, the left leg under the right shin like this. You know, this type of sitting, you'll find in the Shafi Madhab and the other Madhab. In the other schools, not a problem. It exists. It's not clear. But for the Hanafis, you sort of want, I don't know if there's a camera there, right? So it's like, like, like this. Yeah? So that these toes. But if I can't do that, the best I can do is this, alhamdulillah. It's not clear, like, you know, just whatever is easy. There'll be days you can't do that, you know, or some people can't do that. It's not possible for them. So um, Allah does not burden you more than you can do. So so that that's important to realize. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, so, no. If you're in doubt with how many cycles you've done, it, Sada Sahab doesn't work. Like, that's not the way to do it. Because 
potentially you could have missed a unit. And a Sajjah Sahab does not compensate for a unit, eh, for a rakat. So there's a process. When I try to identify what is it that I've missed, I might have my heart leaning towards one of the two rakats, you know, one number, like, oh, I think, you know what, three, not two. So I go with that. When I have no idea, then I base it on the lowest number. And then when I base it on the lowest number, the two, is that clear? Then you have a sajjah sahab at the end, okay, because you're going to sit at tahiyyat after every rak'ah there. It gets a little complicated, yeah. And so for that delay of the tahiyyat, okay, you're going to add. Um, but you can see sajjah sahab is not just the, is not the solution. So do you understand? Let's try, let's try that again. So what is it, fajr? Am I one or two? Which rak'ah am I in? You're confused. Okay, so you go, if your heart leans towards one of the two numbers, it's good. I think it's the second, because I read Kul Ya, Kul Nuhan La Ahad, you know. Right, and you're like, you're, sometimes you work it out. Um, but if you've got no idea, you base it on the lowest number, which is one. But it could be your second, right? You based it on one, it could be your second. So if you base it on one, and it could be your second, after that one, you sit at Tahiyyat. Why? Because the last sitting is Fard. And if you don't sit after one, right, okay, and you give salams later on, someone say, well, well, bro, you only prayed, you, you only prayed one, for example, okay? No, that won't work. So you sit after one. Why? Um, because it's possible it's your second. So you're, you're, you know, somebody turns and say, what are you doing? You prayed three rakah fajr. Uh, I thought I had only prayed one. I got confused. I added another one. No, 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 you prayed three rakah fajr. There's only two rakah, you mubtada innovator. Because, well, hang on, I got confused. However, is your prayer broken? Not if you do the following. So, I one or two? One. But it's really your second. So, after your supposedly one, you sit at tahiyyat. Then you get up for your second. Really, it's your third. And you sat at Tahiyyat, right? Okay, so they're, they're like, oh, you sat after Tahiyyat, okay? And then you get up for your second in your mind, really, it's your third. Then you read at Tahiyyat again. After Tahiyyat, you give Sajjah Sahu. Why? Because you delayed, okay, that second rakah. So now you're fine because you got your at Tahiyyat after the second rakah and you added a third which has no value. You with me? Okay. So now, because getting a ta- the last tahiyyat in its place is imperative. It's imperative, right? Okay, so obviously that brings up lots of different masalas that we won't go into today. And I, I'm, I may have lost a lot of people on this point, I know for sure. I lost myself for a moment. So, you know, it happens, okay? I, I invite you all to... I, uh, this. There's a link for this on the, um, on the Wickham Mosque. I think it's still Wickham Mosque channel. We, I did a fiqh of prayer a few years ago. I think it's more l- legal, like fiqh side of things. And I repeated it. And so it, let me know if you feel like, oh, we can do with another session, you know. We can focus on the fiqh side of things. But I'm so grateful you came. And, um, you know, if you want to really grasp this, then maybe I'll, I'll you know, pitch the seal to you. We do these seal courses. We're going to restart again in November. It's a 40-week min- commitment. It's 10 modules, two hours a week, two, two modules a week for 10 weeks, and then we change. And we do, f- you know, we do this. And most of you guys are attending. One, two, has, t- mashallah, three, four, and five. Okay, so there's, inshallah, you guys come join us. Six, Omer is there as well. You know, like, we're, we're all part of the Sil family. So come down, inshallah ta'ala. We go, we spend time, and we go through this, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Allah bless you all. Thank you so much. If I don't ever see you again, forgive me. Alhamdulillah. It can happen, right? I'm traveling, so I'm traveling, so make dua for me, inshallah. Fatiha. Abu Bilal, inshallah. Maliki Ya Muddin. Ya Kana. Jazakallah, subhanakallah, wa bihamdik, ashad Allah, ilaha illa anta astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر